abandoned exercise equipment, old man slippers, silly old toys, secondary shaft for air and emergency exits. Yeah, this is definitely a nerd cave. Check it out. There's even a dingy old Sega Dreamcast. I have a problem. I have a very small Sega Dreamcast collection. I have a grand total of three games for it. I really like the Sega Dreamcast. I think it's a very interesting console. I think it does what it intended to do. I just haven't had a ton of opportunities to purchase games for it. Therefore, I only have three games. I believe they deserve to know where they rank, where they rate, where they stand against one another and against all the other junk in this beautiful nerd cave of mine. So everything else that I find is I'm spelunking through this nerd cave. I just moved a few months ago and I have not been very diligent or organized about cleaning things up, getting things out of boxes, putting them on shelves. It's time I started respecting them all, and more importantly, I do this thing where I like to buy stuff, and then I put it on shelves and forget about it forever. I decided it's time to actually start enjoying that, start comparing it all against one another, because that's the kind of clickbait that the internet wants, I think. Probably not, but that's okay, because I'm going to do it anyway, and I'm going to enjoy it in the process. I'm going to enjoy my things that I have, that I bought, that I dig out of this musty little nerd cave. Here we go. We can't actually talk yet, because first I have to explain my rating system. This is extremely important. It's how I personally rate and rank my games and toys and things against one another. I call it Spragfrab. Now, I know you probably know what this stands for just by looking at it. It rolls right off the tongue. It's very intuitive. I get it. But I'm going to explain it for you anyway. Spragfrab is Sean's practical rating guide for recommending and buying. That's right, Spragfrab. Let's go over the numbers here. This is a five point scale that starts with five being the best. The best means you buy it. If you have the ability to buy it and the means to enjoy it, you should probably have it. And maybe even if you don't have the means to enjoy it, you might still go buy this piece of media, whatever it is, it's that good. It's a five. We're talking maybe the top 5% of all entertainment media out there. Five, it's great, go grab it. Try it. That's a four. That's extremely positive. It means if you do have the means to get it and enjoy it, you should probably have it. It has a lot of mass appeal and it's probably not exceptionally hard or expensive to find. This is attainable and it's very good and most people need it. That's a four. Everything else. The nature of average, in my case, or at least how I perceive the word, is that it's the biggest group and it contains the most stuff with inside it. I just said with inside. As like combining two words into one. I'm sorry. Anyways, everything else is going to be the biggest group. It's going to be very broad. I'll try to be specific about my feelings on games in that group relative to one another and why they are in that group. It is a cop-out and I get it, but that's also the reality of what I own. I just own a lot of average stuff. And I think if you ask yourself, you'll realize that you do too. That's just kind of the nature of average things. And that's okay. When I say average here, probably skew that in your mind toward the positive. It is worth having in a lot of cases. It's average, it's mediocre, it's fine. And that's fine. I have a lot of things that are just fine. Number two is skip it. This is bad, but it's important that it's not offensive. It's not intentionally bad or anything like that. It just, it's unmemorable or it has more than one major flaw. You just skip past it. No hard feelings. If you have a couple of these on your shelves, that's not a big deal. There's probably good things that I consider too because they are very difficult to get a hold of or they're not worth the money or trouble of having them. Two, it just it has more than one notable flaw. Probably not worth it. Number one is that bottom 5%. It is offensively bad. Maybe even intentionally bad. In no way should its existence be acknowledged. I hope that I never have ones that I talk about that I actually own because I think these things don't even deserve to be acknowledged. I don't want to acknowledge their existence other than just you need to know that there are ones out there. I'm not going to talk about them here, I hope, but they're out there. Easy as pie, right? Yeah, I think so. So let's jump right into it, shall we? First one, Sega Smash Pack Volume 1. This is number three. And for number three, I'm giving it a two. 
there should be a four or maybe a five probably just a four i love compilations i love anthologies this one was a pack-in so it's fairly common fairly inexpensive has a great game selection this should be great and compilations kind of are a cop-out right we're taking a lot of good games or you should be and putting them on new hardware potentially for new audiences like a, like a cash grab when it doesn't play well like these don't play well these tremendous games from the sega saturn sega genesis etc when they don't play well on this console to new audiences and on new hardware when you have other things now that you can play it's almost it's almost disrespectful to the source not almost it is disrespectful to the source material and it's very frustrating that it, it could tarnish the legacy of these games just from anybody that hadn't had a lot of experience with them previously buying a Sega Dreamcast this game included maybe their first console maybe their first home video game experience they pop this game in play these old games that we claim are greats and they're so underwhelming or awkward or just not quite playing right I don't think it's offensive I think it's just lazy I'm just gonna say it's a two it's still probably not gonna be that big of a deal to have it sitting on your shelf it's easy to find it's common I can't help myself I love compilations I'm such a sucker it's a two it's number three game on this list number two evolution two far I promise this seems like it would maybe be an interesting RPG RPG from the year 2000 it's really weird and maybe it's a product of not having played the first game but I feel like I'm missing something I feel like I'm being sort of thrown into an awkward weird character and story fire that doesn't seem to amount to much and doesn't drag me in I can't even be interested enough to play it for that long it just doesn't hook me at all everything is kind of bland not vanilla just uninteresting uninspiring it's all kind of awkward I'm gonna say this one is a two because the only people that are really gonna be interested in playing this are hardcore RPG fans or roguelike fans it's got some roguelike elements to it and I think that's the only group of people that's gonna be interested in getting this it's not a genre that's heavily represented on the Dreamcast. There's not a lot of affordable ones out there readily available. This one's not extremely common, but it's not that expensive either. So it might be tempting. Probably a better choice for those hardcore roguelike fans and stuff. That's why I'll say it's, it's a two. I was teetering on three, two, because there's really nothing that bad about it. Just very uninteresting. Uh, but you'd have to go out of your way to find a person, I think, who would actively enjoy playing this game. I think it's a small group of people and it's not the most common thing in the world for the most part I think people can just skip it finally we've got Dead or Alive 2 this game is absolutely synonymous with the Sega Dreamcast I don't like fighters not really any of them and I don't really like this one in particular I'm more of a Soul Calibur guy on the other consoles obviously I don't own it on the Sega Dreamcast but this game is so positively received so synonymous with the name Sega Dreamcast I feel like it had to be number one on the list and there was like no competition for it either but in general I think this is a game that most people that have Sega Dreamcast should probably have this in the library easy to get a hold of very well regarded as far as fighters go dead or alive to give it a shot if you get the chance I think it's well worth it it's definitely above average in its gameplay value and again good value proposition not hard to find I wish I had more to say. I don't know a lot about fighters, but I know I'm happy to have this one on my shelf. That's Dead or Alive 2. And that's my entire Sega Dreamcast collection right there. I know that was massive. It's a lot to get through. Guess what? Here's the rankings all against each other. I'm going to rank everything that I stumble on in this stupid room full of awesome things. What did I say stupid room for? It's actually a great room. I have a great space in here, and I'm very grateful that my wife let me have it. Thanks, wife. You can just ignore that part where I was being stupid and saying the word stupid. Gonna rank and rate all these things against each other. It's gonna be ludicrous. There's no reason these should be ranked together. I'm gonna do it anyway because I'm brave. Here's the breakdown of day one. Dead or Alive 2, number one. Evolution 2, number two. Sega Smash Pack Volume 3, Volume 1, excuse me, number three. And as far as you know, these are the three greatest things that I own in all of my existence because that's all I've ranked so far. But I'm looking forward to doing some more. As I talked through this though, I also kind of keep a running list of things that I want. Not rated, just ranked in order of how much I want them. Not rated, I haven't played them yet, at least on this console. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 is one of my favorite games of all time on the PlayStation 1. I think it is a necessity that I get this on the Sega Dreamcast. I think the Sega Dreamcast version might be the best version of the game. It is very common. There's no reason. There's 
Shame on me for not having this game already. Number two, Soul Calibur. I think when I think of fighting games for the Sega Dreamcast, that's probably the next one that I think of, if not the first one. I think it's a better game personally if it resembles two that I've played on the PlayStation 2, then I think it's going to be a better game than Dead or Alive 2, and I think the internet agrees with me in general. Number three, Crazy Taxi. Again, that's just kind of synonymous with the Sega Dreamcast. Number four, Sonic Adventure. Uh, and those two, it just comes down to sort of price and, and commonness. I think Crazy Taxi is a little easier to find and get your hands on. And then five, Fantasy Star Online. Even disregarding the online part, I would just be honored to have this game because I'm a big Monster Hunter fan. And allegedly, Fantasy Star Online is a similar genre of gameplay. So I'd be honored to have that game. But since I don't have any of these, maybe I'll spend a few minutes trying to figure out what the heck is going on in Evolution 2 while I think about the next video that I should make. Hey, thank you for checking this out. The reason I'm here is to create some positive sentiment and draw some positive attention toward the Children's Miracle Network. That's a tremendous charitable organization that's very large, very efficient, helps millions of children and their families every single year. I'm very fond of it. Check them out at cmn.org or see my personal campaign at seanshaler.com.